Uh, I'm Venkat Chapra, plant pathologist at Langdon Experiment Station. Uh, today I'm with the topic, management of major diseases of uh, canola uh, for the canola getting it right meaning. Uh, I have outlined my topic, a little bit of an uh, introduction about the crop and uh, major diseases what we, the, the, that we survey and what are the management options available. The major diseases I wanted to list are the black leg is still the, uh, always the first one, white mold the second one, and followed by club root. It's a little bit areas, it's a very endemic, and uh, we are doing a little bit of uh, pathotype research, which I wanted to present a little bit. Then a minor disease popped up because of the dry season and um, how what it looked like. And then I will be wrapping up my talk. Uh, with this, uh, the, the canola acreage uh, every year is around 1.5 to 1.7 million acres uh, in North Dakota. Uh, that's uh, from the previous talks. Um, I, came to know that it's still there is a progress uh, for to increase the acreages and speaking of uh, on the right side you see them uh, on top picture uh, but there are bare patches here and there that's what the scenario like uh, was like uh, in our area last year uh, many of the farmers went for um, replantings um, some uh, left it and uh, later on some emerged and um, the, the bottom the left picture if you see that come on uh, it it says um, you, you see that some are matured and you still have flowering and uh, the right bottom right picture it's it's still flowering some some people uh, some uh, most of the acreage has been swathed that's how it looked like and it was um, uh, pretty you know, chaos but the farmers are happy with whatever the yields they got it uh, the, the, um, speaking of the major thing last uh, for the last year we speak is it's a dry year uh, the, the three months uh, were very uh, sparse rainfall uh, you can see may june july which is the major part of our uh, the growing season Season of canola, it was dry and the temperatures were high. For any disease to develop at that point of time, we consider dew point and relative humidity also. Uh, the dew point should be around 60, so that in those months uh, where we can see a little bit of um, good um, um, you know, disease development, but we haven't seen in our uh, areas. Uh, the first disease which I wanted to speak on is the black leg on canola. It's a fungal disease. Uh, the fungus Leptosperia maculana causes that. And you can see the symptoms uh, starting from cotyledons on the leaves and onto the stem, and which leads to the stem cankers. This is the most uh, um, yield uh, destroying phase of uh, black leg. Uh, when you cut horizontal open and uh, this you see the top uh, uh, right picture it is um, it's like a smiley but no it's a black like this is just i wanted to make it a little funny so i put in that picture uh, speaking of the, uh, the surveys of black leg, uh, Dr. Del Rio uh, does every year uh, of a black leg survey. He may mainly concentrate to, uh, concentrates the major canola. Um, growing counties. Uh, he had last year he had 47 fields um, count um, scouted. Uh, among them, Cavalier is the one which, which they did most of their um, study. And uh, the, what they did is every, in every field they went uh, and collected 50 plants from diff 10 different sites and walking in a different uh, W pattern or X pattern. And they have found uh, the, the, the visual on visual disease, they did disease, visual disease identification and Everlands gene identification. If you see that the black leg incidence in Cavalier County, it is um, from 2014 to 2020, into 18 and uh, by 18, it uh, steeped low, but uh, by 19 and 2021, it's increasing now. Um, I, I have a reason for that, but uh, if anybody have a question, I would, I'm, I'm not sure what's it, whether I'm correct or not, but uh, it's th that's what is happening over here. Um, the, you, you, this is the incidence when you scout uh, out of 100 uh, stems, 40% are the um, of with black leg. And uh, in the prevalence study, uh, out of the, uh, it's in Cavalier County. Out of the 100 fields, if you visit, all the 100 fields had black leg disease. So this is the how it um, um, uh, prevail, 
doing in uh, Cavalier County. Uh, the, the, uh, black leg continues to be a threat in uh, uh, Cavalier County and uh, all over the state. Race identification is needed to improve cultivar rotations as we are uh, dealing with the, uh, the, the rotation. We recommend generally uh, rotate the, the varieties. So we have to find the what are the avalanche genes we have. Here we have uh, six, seven, and 11 are major and also AVR LM4. So if you have resistant varieties, RLM6, RLM7, or RLM11, we could. Um, um, take care of them pretty much. Uh, additional race of phenotyping is in progress. And with This is all uh, Dr. Del Rio's research uh, from his lab. A um, the, the, the couple of years ago, we did a seed treatment evaluations, and uh, there is a one chemical called Saltro. In, uh, it did well in our studies, and we had some over 500 pounds of uh, uh, yield increase uh, compared to the other treatments and also to the uh, non-treated check. The management of black leg in general, general, we recommend that uh, there are resistance cultivars are available, rotate resistant cultivars, seed treatment um, uh, are available, refer to North Dakota field crop fungicide guide if you have um, to find a better ones. Uh, the next disease which um, come usually we see in uh, our area is uh, white mold, and uh, you, you as and everybody knows this is a um, disease a pathogen which can infect a lot of uh, broadleaf crops. So uh, um, canola uh, temperature and moisture conditions during bloom are extremely important for canola to get this disease. Continuous soil moisture for a minimum period of ten days, accompanied by soil temperatures of sixty to seventy seven degrees for this uh, sclerotia to germinate and produce a mushroom-like structure, which we call apothecia. This apothecia releases the ascospores and the ascospores should reach the flowering canola. Then only the disease should, will show up. Like, um, uh, so I, I gathered up my, my data for the, um, uh, which I did uh, at the Langdon Research Experiment Station for the past uh, six years. Uh, to, to 2016 was very a wet year and I got around 75% of disease incidents in uh, non-treated check and I come I compared uh, the major chemicals which we use for management of white mold are preaxer, proline, quash, endura, thiophenate methyl. So um, the, the, except endura in a couple of years, every other chemical was behaving uh, equally uh, in my study uh, test. And uh, uh, to, man, to mention, I'm, I'm conducting this on uh, supplemental irrigation. I provide irrigation and in some years I have inoculated with sclerotia and some also with the ASCO spores. Uh, so, so last year I inoculated with the sclerotia. See, the, uh, I only had for hardly 5% of um, white mold incidence in my trials. And um, the, 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 I, I used a trend line to predict next year's. If it is a wet year, it, we, uh, this uh, prediction won't work. But if it is a dry year, we will be having less than a minus uh, negative 10% of uh, white mold incidences. So it's all uh, it's something. Uh, it's just a, for fun I put in that. Uh, come, um, uh, coming to my eels, even though you know, the, my uh, say they are so say that non uh, my eels are non significant, but uh, it, I have around five five thousand pounds uh, uh, in my fungi, good fungicide treated um, treatments. Management of white mold in general, again, I wanted to, to mention that there are no resistant cultivars available to manage this disease. Uh, this disease, only foliar fungicides are recommended in, at uh, spring at 20 to 50% of flowering stage. There is a very, very good pro forecasting system available with um, NDSU. Go to this um, website and uh, during com com cropping season and mention your uh, from stage of the crop and uh, find out whether you are at risk or not. If you see that high red and you are at a high risk, uh, in uh, refer to the North Dakota Field Crop Fungicide Guide, there are several um, best um, uh, fungicides available to treat. The third, the third disease which we are seeing, um, um, it is um, quite a bit endemic to our area uh, of um, Cavalier County. 
um, which which is club root and canola. Uh, this it is caused by a soil borne protist uh, called Plasmodiophora brassicae. It's not a fungus, bacteria, or a slime mold. Uh, we have to so that's why a lot of times it's very hard to control this disease. Uh, over 3,200 percent of uh, yield losses have been seen across the world. Um, even in a dry year, we say that how did the club root fared in if the plant is alive and that means it has a little bit of moisture right so this that is enough for the club root pathogen to infect uh, the crop so it will 30 to 60 percent of moisture was uh, optimum for it to have uh, that disease it loves acidic ph six, uh, however 6.6 .6 is optimum for it and infects only brassica crops those are so that, that we are a little bit uh, fortunate over here we have a lot of crops here to um, rotate with it. Um, and uh, in our statewide survey of 2020 and 2021 indicated that uh, resting spores of, uh, that is the DNA of uh, um, DNA studies of um, resting spores of uh, uh, Plasmodium for Brassica, they are present in 80% of the counties in North Dakota where we surveyed. Um, now, speaking of the um, survey data, we are we have some keeping an eye on since 2013. It's and it's uh, since it's identified. We had a peak period of uh, infection um, incidences in 2018, where we had 33 fields out of 100 we scouted, and uh, the the year next we have a little bit. Then again, it's lowered. And last year, out of uh, 20 fields we scouted, only one field has a, a visual club root galls. Um, in general, the management of club root, uh, we recommend integrated efforts uh, are much needed. Uh, scout to find club root early. Uh, rotate genetics of resistance with lengthy crop rotations. Sanitation is very must and control brassica weeds and volunteers. Beet lime is good for patch management. If you have identified for the first time galls in your field in a small patch, beet lime will be some definitely a good option. And, uh, and the, again, uh, the, to know the, uh, the, since we are using only the resistant uh, cultivars to manage this disease, we have to know the pathotypes of um, club root uh, uh, pathogen. What we have based on that, we have to go for the resistant varieties. Uh, the pathotype studies have been done by several um, scientists um, in the past, Williams in 1966, Somat in 1996, and the Europeans have developed their own um, club root differentials. And um, there is one scientist in um, uh, Albert, University of Alberta, Dr. Stralkov, he clubbed all the three um, uh, differentials and he has developed the Canadian club root differentials. Based on that, uh, study, we have a you know, mutant pathotype in our North Dakota soils. It is only in one four field. It's recommend it um, we, we found in last May. Then we thought of, okay, we go and test how our resistant varieties are faring because it is a mutant types, so whether the, our resistant varieties are still working or not. We collected, uh, we collected the prominent um, uh, eight varieties which have been used commonly, uh, resistant varieties commonly used by our growers in our area. And we tested uh, in that uh, mutant pathotype ground. Uh, this is how it looked like. The susceptible cultivars have, are very nasty and they have um, galls all over. The resistant varieties looked pretty clean, um, and then the, the, that's the, I, feel, I call it the day and night difference. Uh, look at this graph where I have uh, the center. Um, extreme ones are the controls L two thirty three P and uh, CPP seven nine nine seven eight. These two are. Uh, controls and the center eight one eight varieties are the club root resistant cultivars one resistant cultivar somehow showed around 78 percent of um, um, the club root in that so uh, is it a resistance breakdown we have to test more and uh, i can uh, um, um, let the uh, for, for confirmation. I have to test it one more year. Uh, in the general club root um, uh, conclusions for this is the resistant cultivars are widely used in a, in the endemic areas in very close rotations, which is not a good practice. I suggest um, close ro rotations with the resistant club varieties might lead to breakdown of resistance. Or because of that, it's happening. I don't know. New pathotypes and mutated pathotypes have been identified in North Dakota, so um, be aware of that. And uh, longer crop rotations with resistant cultivars is highly recommended.
The next thing I wanted to show is uh, somehow it popped up. Um, one grower called us and he said uh, there is a little clumsy and he couldn't see while swathing. Everything is, is um, um, hazy for him to while swathing. He has stopped several times to clean the windshields and the mirrors. And, uh, and well, I went and checked uh, where I found a whitish gray kind of powder. It is very sticky. Uh, um, you know, on the echo, it's all over the equipment. And when I went to the field and I found the same kind of um, uh, whitish gray sticky um, material onto the stem. So um, brought it to the lab, micro lab and put it under the microscope. I found I found these spores so that uh, that confirms that uh, it is powdery mildew, a fungal pathogen, Erisophae cruciferarum. Why it happened? The temperatures are very congenial for it. Last year, 68 to 81 degrees, it was always humidity of 50 to 95 percent and heavy dew during nights, which has, and uh, it is a polycyclic disease. It went for several um, cycles in the same season in a short period. That's how we produce that dust, which, which was uh, very hazy created nuisance conditions for the grower while swathing. Uh, these are the molecular, uh, even the molecular S has confirmed that it is the poultry milieu spores. Uh, in summary, I wanted to say that um, the black leg is the net, still the number one variety and the, the number one practice of uh, uh, to manage this disease is rotate the resistant varieties. Wild mold use fungicide based on the prediction model. You know, we have a, whether you have to, uh, the NDSU has a good website we have to go and um, just uh, click on it and find out whether it is um, you need a, you need to spray or not for the white mold. Uh, club root um, integrated efforts are needed. Longer rotations, sanitations, and resistant varieties. Dry weather influenced a minor disease to flare up without significant effects on yield in 2021 season, which is a powder milieu. Just I showed it. Uh, pathotypes are have been found, but so we have to um, for one mutant pathotypes. We have to do a lot more research on it. Club root resistant varieties are still holding good against the pathotypes present in Andy, but one, uh, I don't know, it's, we have to confirm it. Here, the literature is available and um, um, whatever you want, you can go. And if you still have questions, you can call me at my research center. And uh, no, I have given from, provided my phone in the last uh, slide. You can go for that. And before that, I wanted to thank all the um, some, uh, sponsors, helpers, and my colleagues, everybody who made this research to be a successful and presented to you. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Mm -hmm.